Hello and welcome to another edition of PCHEM Lab uh, Screencast. I'm Jeff Yarger and today we're going to quickly cover an example of pulse field gradient spin echo NMR using Bruker ASCII data. The specific sample is chloroform and deuterated acetone. We're going to quickly go how you would calibrate that gradient and then determine the diffusion coefficient of the solute. I want to say something briefly about calibrations which is the common methods are to field map your sample because Typically your gradient from the NMR experiment is given in a percent gradient or a DAC unit on varian, not an absolute gradient, so you need to convert it to Tesla per meter. This can be done by direct field mapping with an external diffusion standard, like putting a sample of water in there to determine what the uh, to convert percent gradient into an absolute in Tesla per meter. In our case, we're going to use the internal diffusion standard the known diffusion coefficient for acetone. Use that to calibrate our gradient and then use that calibrated gradient to determine the diffusion coefficient of the solute, in this case chloroform. So on the NMR handout for Chemistry 343 gives an explanation of standard spin echo uh, pulse field gradient method and the equations behind it. Again, what we're typically doing is measuring signals. The gamma is a constant of the nuclei, in this case proton. Initially, we're going to have a known diffusion coefficient. We have known pulses for our gradients and distance between the pulses. These are known from the NMR experiment. We set time of the gradient pulses and time between them. So those are known from the experiment. And then we calculate an absolute gradient. Then in the second thing, we turn this around. We know a gradient after we've calibrated it. We know our signals from uh, chloroform. We know again the gyromagnetic ratio and the deltas so we can calculate the diffusion coefficient. And this handout is given with both the NMR data and on the Blackboard site if you're in Chemistry 343. Um, a paper that gives the diffusion coefficient of acetone is a macromolecular or macromolecules paper in 1992, and it gives the acetone diffusion coefficient to be 4.65 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared per second, and that's what we're going to be using uh, as our internal standard to calibrate. We're uh, neglecting the isotope effect, which for uh, this molecule is very small. Now where can you get this data? You can get it off yargersci.com under downloads, and the data is right here. And again, it also gives you what you should get as an answer and the handout I just referred to. If you're in ASU Chemistry 343 PCHEM Lab, you can go to the Blackboard site, get that data, as well as several other papers and references associated with this. So let's jump in, and we're going to use Kaleidograph to show how to do this. However, this is generally applicable to other software. I've already given an example of importing ASCII data into Kaleidograph, so I'm going to skip that step where I've already imported all eight data sets and giving them a title of what their percent gradient is for each of these data sets. This is the y-axis of NMR. The x-axis, they all had the same header file and I was able to generate this using the function create a series, which I referred to last time to create a PPM axis. Now I need to plot this real quick to see what the data looks like and I'm just going to just go ahead and plot up all of them. And I'll go ahead and um, move this over here, get that out of the way. But let's just quickly look at the spectra. And I want to look for a couple things. One is, are all the things overlapping? And you can see that they are. And they're all at a basically 8.03 ppm. The line width you know, you would say looks somewhat similar because if I use the height of the peak, my assumption is that the line width is the same. And if you scaled these all to the same, it would be better. And then also is the baseline coming to zero for all of them? And basically it is. So that's a pretty good assumption. Going back, I want to make sure the same is true for my acetone. And again, the line widths do look about all the same and the baseline definitely is nicely centered at zero. In other words, if you scaled all these to the same height, normalized them all, they look to have basically have the same width to first approximation. And again, I'm going to note that the PPM value is around 2 for, for this data. 
And the pentad is because it's D5 acetone that we're looking at. So it's the one proton on the methyl is being split by the deuterium. So I can assign that spectrum and those satellites are due to the 1% carbon-13 in chloroform. So that all makes sense. I can assign this spectrum. I want to use the acetone peak over here at 2 ppm to calibrate my gradient and then I want to use the signal intensities here um, to um, determine what my diffusion coefficient is. So what am I going to need to do here? Well, the first thing I'm going to need to do is know the signal at 2 tau for acetone. Um, then I'm going to need to know the, the signal at 2 tau um, for chloroform. Might as well do them both at the same time. Okay, now once I know those, because of the equation, I want to linearize this plot. So I want to take, I want the ln of that. I want the ln of S2 for acetone. And I want the ln of the signal at 2 tau for chloroform as well. Okay, I'm going to try to make it where I can see those columns. I can see those titles a little better. Okay. And then, let's, so let's start there. So I have my data here. And, uh, you know, I need the signal height for each of these and then I'll take the natural log of that signal height. So how am I going to determine this? Well I could go over to where the data is, go down to um, 8 ppm right in here, find the maximum where it happens you know in these spectra. We know it's about 8.03 you know somewhere down here like look for the maximum peak and write down you know what those are. You can see that it's increasing 20,000, 50,000 back down. You know, so the maximum somewhere in here. Write all those maxima down you know, in this column because that's the maximum signal height at um, 2 tau. There's a nice way to be able to do this though with the equation and then I can, I'm going to note that the, um, the ppm is around 8 and so this is in the 5,000 range as far as the number of points. It's in the 5,000 range and then I could do the same down for acetone which is at 2 ppm and we'd have to make it all the way down here to the 26,000 range is where that peak is. So I could go and manually find those. However, there's a nice way to be able to do this using the formula entry and the way to do this is I've already um, highlighted here. So acetone is in the 26,000 range. So cell 0, which is this top here, and then the ninth column over. So it starts with 0 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this right here is cell 0, 9. Well, I'm going to look for the Cmax between 26 and 27,000. And I'm going to write it you know, into that column. And that's going to, so out of column number one here, I'm going to look for the maximum. And then in the next one down, in cell 1-9, I'm going to look for the maximum in the same range, but for column number two, which is the 15%. And then I'm going to just keep doing that. Okay, so this is an easy way to have it find the maximum for you. It's finding the maximum number in that. When I run this, it runs through all those. Kaleidograph has a glitch that it can only do so many of these at once. It can't do the last one, so I have to do the last one manually myself. So now I have those maximum values, and those were in the 26 to 27,000 range. So I'm going to move over now and do it the same thing for chloroform. I'm going to move over one column to column 10, and again go from zero. And now the Cmax range we already said is is around five to six thousand. So I just safely go between. 5 and 7,000 in that range. And then I can quickly run that as well. And again, I'm limited, so I have to do the last one here. So that was a very quick way using uh, the formula entry to put it in specific cells and using the function Cmax in between specific ranges to find the maximum for me. 
Um, so now I have those maximum signal values, and that's my signal intensity, assuming the line width is a change, doesn't change. Well, now I can quickly just take the logarithm. And so in Kaleidograph, that's LN. So I'm just going to have column 9, which is this column right here. I'm going to, in column 11, which is over here, I'm going to take the LN of column 9 and put it over there, and then same in 10. So if I look right now, um, I don't have anything in either of those columns, but I'm about to fill column 11 and 12 with those values. And so now I have the natural log of each of those signals. So I have the natural log of my signals. What do I need next? I need something about the gradient. So I'm going to move over here column-wise and, and start adding some columns for the gradient. Let's start with what we know. We know the percent gradient. And we know that because of the formula, we're going to need to take the percent gradient squared. And I'll make it where I can see that. I want to be able to convert that to a gradient squared in, it'll be in Tesla squared per meter squared. And then just to have a good, I want to then also calculate just what that is in Gauss per centimeter because that's the common value you typically see on NMR probes, etc. So I'm just going to make it where we can really view these columns a little better. Okay, so I need to be able to fill those in. This one I have to do manually, right? I know what they are. 2, 15, these are given as the file name themselves. Um, and given in the handout. So it gives you the, per these are what we entered in when we did the Bruker data, which is we told it what percent gradients to run. And it's a linear percent of the maximum gradient it does. Now it's easy to take the square of that, and I've done that here. So C14, this is column 14, that's column 13, is just C13 times C13, or basically the square. So now we've just squared those numbers, that's easy to see. Now what we need to do is determine, is to use acetone, the data with the known diffusion, to give us an absolute value of these gradients squared instead of this relative one. So what we need to do is first determine, based on the uh, Stutzgall-Tanner equation, we need to um, be able to determine you know, the conversion for that. And so what we need to do is plot the gradient this the gradient squared in the units that we know right now which is percent gradient squared and we'll do it versus ln of acetone so if we make that plot and this has a reversed axis so I'm just gonna switch it back to normal there and do a curve fit of that a linear curve fit aha there we go now what we really need is this slope because that slope, you know, times the percent gradient squared over, you know, minus the gamma squared d, you know, delta squared minus big delta minus delta is good, and the square root of the whole thing will, will allow us to calibrate that gradient. So I need that number right there, which is minus 0 0.0031538. So with that number, I can put it into equation, and there it is. So I've already done this. So I can multiply C14, which is my gradient squared, by that slope. And then the other constants, which is right here, is the gamma of proton and squared. The diffusion coefficient, the known diffusion coefficient of acetone, which is uh, 4.65 times 10 to the minus 9. That's written out here. The known delta, which is 8.8 milliseconds, and the known capital delta, the distance between the pulse, which is 0.2 milliseconds. So I put those all in units of seconds and meters so that this will come out in uh, Tesla squared per meter for the gradient. So I can run that, and now I have my gradient values. Now I can take those, I can take the square root of that to give me the gradient times 100 which converts it from um, Tesla per meter to Gauss per centimeter 
and I can see that this is now my calibrated gradient, both my calibrated gradient squared and just the gradient so I can compare uh, to what they give you as literature values for Bruker, etc. So now with these values, I now have an absolute gradient that I can now use for my um, uh, solute, which is uh, chloroform. So now I've calibrated, I've done the first step, which is to calibrate my gradient. So now I can plot, and I'm going to actually show you, I'm going to plot my gradient squared, and I'm going to plot it versus ln of both, both of these. Basically, I want to back calculate the acetone to make sure I get 4.65, that I'm doing everything right. But really what I'm after is the chloroform here. So there's both of them. I can quickly do a linear fit to both of them. And now I have my linear fit slope values here. Okay. Um, now here's where I'm going to just all I have to do with those slopes values is now do a simple calculation to calculate the diffusion coefficient. What I've done this in, just to make it simple, is um, in Mathematica. So I put the diffusion equation, which is the diffusion is minus the slope over gamma squared, little delta squared, times big delta minus little delta over 3. So that's basically my equation. I've entered in what the slope values are, and here it is. It's for acetone, it's minus 42.45. I've entered that there. I've entered what gamma is. That's the gyromagnetic ratio for proton. You can look that up on the web. Little and big delta are given in the handout. They're, they're put in experimentally into the pulse sequence, and you'll get that for every time you run, and then I can quickly calculate it and sure enough I get 4.65 times 10 to the minus 9. This is in meters squared per second if you keep track of the units. So I've sure enough haven't made any mistakes here. Now I can take that for the slope for chloroform which is minus 35.828 put it in same values otherwise and it gives me a value of 3.9 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared per second. And so I haven't clued the units. So that's what I calculate as the diffusion coefficient for the solute. I can now compare that to literature values. And I find here's a CRC handbook for the literature values. And it basically gives 3.6 times 10 to the minus 9 meters squared per second. So I'm a little off, but fairly close. And so that's basically a quick overview of how you determine the diffusion coefficient using an internal standard to calibrate the gradient, give you absolute values, and then using that gradient to um, determine the diffusion coefficient of a solute that's in that solvent. Thanks for listening. I'll see you again soon.